What's up, everybody? Bill Tendo here, and I am here with Thomas, the, known as the Millennial Collector Ohio. Thomas worked with and was a part of Game Junction for a while. So uh, basically, Thomas and I have not really gone over any details. Um, anything we talk about right now is going to be uh, straight off the cuff. Um I did do about 10 recorded interviews before I made my original video. Uh, it took a, I, I actually did started doing those video, those uh, interviews months ago, and it took a long time before anybody was willing to put their name out of there, put their name out there. Uh, the truth is there's a lot of um, embarrassment. There's a lot of uh, shame that people deal with because they were taken advantage of by someone. And uh, that's not their fault. You know, that's not your fault. You know, if I have, you know, if my morals are looser than yours, it's easier for me to do immoral things or yeah, I know, un I know from, unethical things. I know from the start, it was like something I didn't want to talk about because I felt I was like just really angry. And right. to be honest, it was embarrassment because it's, you know, I'm an adult and I felt like I should have seen a lot of this stuff ahead of time and was embarrassed that it happened to me and other people. But the fact that it it's continually to happen, you know, continuing to happen is kind of the reason why I have to talk about it. Right. And, uh, you know, that was my thing is like I've been wanting to make this for a long time now. But the reason I haven't is because, like I said, people didn't want their names mentioned. But now that it's out there, people are much more um, and there are serious names attached to it. Whether it be Mr. Rightway said that he had a situation with uh, Brandon at Game Junction or uh, Br we all know Brandy, Gamer Aimer, and we're going to let her tell her own story. Um, I've talked to her uh, in great depth about it. Um, but uh, also, I want to put out there that uh, Thomas just informed me that we've met in person at a convention and... It was a convention that I was involved with because of Game Junction, and I did not have a great time. Um, so, bro, I really apologize for not remembering you. I don't remember really anyone I met there except for a couple of people that are, you know, friends of mine or fans of the pay of the stuff I do. Brandon and uh, Game Closet, great guy. Yeah, that's a commonality. I had a lot of problems at conventions because of Game Junction as well. So, so um, let's start off with a basic timeline. Um, how long do you think you worked with Game Junction, and how, and when did you start? It's really hard to remember exactly when I started, but I know for sure I was full time doing a lot of stuff um, for Game Jam, which was last April. Mm -hmm. And from April to October was basically my timeline with Game Junction. So a serious six months. Yeah. And in that six months, we did like seven conventions or so, five, four or five out of the state. Right. Right. Um, so how did you get hooked up with Game Junction? Uh, Game Junction was shared in a local group, um, an Ohio retro group. And lo he's pretty local to me. Like Brandon's really local to me. Um, so we kind of met each other there and he would message me back and forth because I would post content on Instagram, like my pickups and right. video gaming restorations, things like that. And he kind of met me there. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just kind of the way things happen in the community. You meet other people in the community. Also, uh, I forgot to uh, point this out at the beginning because I really want to make a point of it. And I really want to hammer this in. My goal has is not and has never been to burn down Game Junction. It is not to take Game Junction out. I want to be very clear about that. It's not about views. I'll never get paid for making content. I'm okay with that. I have a job that pays me. It's fine. My goal is simply awareness. If you are, go if someone is going to work with Game Junction, they need to know exactly what they are getting into. And that is the whole reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's not out of hate. I don't hate Brandon. I don't hate anyone. Um, but I feel like there is, a, as a member of the community that does everything he can to give back to the community, I feel like uh, information 
on a potentially hazardous situation or a potentially exploitative situation, uh, that information should be out there so someone should can make an informed decision. Yeah, that's the 100% the reason why I'm kind of, you know, going on camera now finally and talking about it because it was it was something I wasn't real super comfortable talking about. But at this point, right. I found there was more people after Brandy and I both left around the exact same time. It, there's been more things that's been going on and it's it kind of has to stop. And since I am still lo local to him, um, there's like a convention or two that he's being advertised to go to that not only will I not go to it, but the group of friends I, you know, I tag along with are not going. Vendors I know aren't going. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I've heard a lot of that. The, the amount of people that are just popping out uh, with similar stories is insane. I actually have um, the, the video right here. Um, and I, I got to say, there is probably over 100 comments at, at this point, And we're only 24 hours into it. And at least half of those are like this this happened to me also. So um, what was your position with Game Junction? I mean, I'm uh, sure you didn't have an official title no. as it, it it's uh, Brandon's organization. And, you know, he just like I my employees wouldn't have a title per se, but no real title. And what's funny is I saw that it's labeled Thomas the intern. And that's so appropriate uh, <laughs> that. Yeah, I I put this as Thomas the intern because um Brandy had mentioned that you were a part of Game Junction, but uh, you were treated like an intern. Yes. And so that's why I put that there. I meant to mention that to you before we started recording. I don't I don't mean it as a slight. Uh, I I because that's how I have it filed mentally. No, and it's it's quite accurate because when I kind of jumped on to the game junction. It felt like it was uh, like a partnership between Brandy and Brandon, where it was kind of like 50 50, where Brandy had so much that she was bringing to the table. Brandon had some stuff that he was bringing to the table. And I was there basically to help out, but I didn't bring much to the table. And I had no problem uh, what I considered paying my dues because that's kind of just my the way I am. I have no problem, you know, working for a little pay or no pay for a while, but there should be some kind of payoff ultimately. Yeah. Uh, whether it be, um, uh, usable exposure because all exposure is not good, but there should be some kind of usable exposure, you know, that you could leverage into something that does eventually pay you or, um, a experience that you can use to pay off later on. Or if things are making money, then you should be cut in for a share of that. Yeah, and that was one of the main reasons why I left towards the end was at the very end, I was still there, you know, Game Junction was being promoted at events and I was never advertised for anything. My name or photo was never used, mm -hmm. but I was expected to kind of be the one that, you know, caddied him around, brought him to the events, you know. Right. Um, so go for, go for coffee. Right. So, um, I, I realize this might be a little sensitive and if you don't want to get uh, in into it in depth, feel free to kind of brush it aside. But uh, it's a, just a question I feel like I have to ask. So when you're caddying him to these events, uh, when you're going from event to event, you're running out to get coffee, you're going to get lunch, hotel rooms, gas. Who Who's paying for all of this? Oh, me. Like. 99% of the time, it was so rare that any money really ever came out of. And even then, it was a couple of the conventions will, you know, pay for the hotel. Right, right. So I would pay for the gas and the food. And uh, um, so let me get in your headspace a little bit. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to be like as, as gentle as I can with this because I know it's an uncomfortable situation to talk about if you feel like you've been uh, financially exploited. You know, um, I, I understand there's a, there's a weirdness to that conversation in general. Um, was it was it ever expressed to you that you'd be paid back for any of this? Was it uh, asked for or was it just assumed you were going to? In the beginning, there was, I'll, you know, I'm having issues. You know, I'm there's always a lot of I'm having money issues. I'm having issues. 
I'll get you back. I'll get you back. And then eventually it was just kind of, it felt like it was expected. Right. And that was <clears throat> insane. Like it, it was like there, there's gotta be like some type of monetary payback or something like that, especially coming to find out when a lot of stuff was given to game junction for testing and things like that. And he's selling it. And, you know, um, speaking of which, um, I was rage te- texted last night. Um, I was accused of lying about everything for views and that I made everything up. Um, and although I may have been slightly inaccurate on some things, uh, is there any items that you can think of, like specific items? There wasn't anything specific that I was thinking like through your video or the other video that were super inaccurate. Um, Mm -hmm. It was all pretty dead on. It it was, uh, it was all pretty dead on. Um, I know, especially when it gets even, but the thing is it goes even deeper. Like um, when he, you you would bring up that he would reach out to people for free products and things like that. I looked at the outbox and the email. Mm-hmm. I've seen the copy and paste that he would do every single day to just every person in the world. And it was the same blurb. It was, Hey, game junction has this exposure. We have tens of thousands of people. We have all these things. We go to all these events and we have these big, awesome things that are coming. We're going to have a whole network of stuff. Um, if you send us, you know, your stuff to me, um, it'll be reviewed. And, and, and those numbers, if you look at it, almost everything was brandy. Like, Right. He was he was grouping in not just the stuff that I get that Brandy brought a lot to Game Junction and a lot of numbers. Absolutely. But he's like adding, you know, his thousands with her thousands. This is the same people. So basically what I said in my original video about inflating numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's a it's let me call it the Jaguar 64, the Atari Jaguar math, because they said it was 64 bit when. Technically, it wasn't, but they added all these weird numbers together to get to 64, even though it wasn't a 64. It's it's Jaguar math. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you spent a, a, a solid six months. Um, so you did uh, driving duty, um, uh, coffee runs, stuff like that. Um, what what would you do? at these places so once you get say you you're on the road you're going to a con what would you do at the convention so originally it was i would just kind of follow (laughs) recording Mm -hmm. um, all the pickups things like that um that was what kind of started i was just kind of a cameraman in the beginning um but towards the end um i was editing the videos i was in a lot of the videos We'd right. go to we'd go to a convention and it was expected that I would record him. He would record me. We'd both have multiple videos coming out of it. And it, it kind of went from I was I was the whole time I'm like learning, learning to be a content creator, paying my right. dues and feel like I'm kind of like kind of like this is what I'm supposed to kind of do to get to. Where right. I want you, to be. you feel like you're, you're paying your dues. You're putting your steps in. You're going to yeah. make the mile. Yeah. And I last year I wanted to go to one out of state convention. Um, so the first time that I got asked to go to a convention out of state and pay for everything, it was no big deal. I was like, ah, I'm going to want to do that anyways. That was kind of my goal was I wanted to go out of state, stay at a hotel, go to an event. Right. And it turned into like five of those. Like it was way more than I expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun to go out to conventions, you know, especially one that is an overnighter, you know, you have to stay out of town overnight. It's like a little miniature vacation. Yeah, and you get to go to all these different states you've never been to, see a bunch of stuff. It's it's a good experience, but kind of felt like that's the way it was in the beginning, and then towards the end, it was not so great. Right. Um. So when so you're putting out this time and effort. How um would how would you say the structure was as far as we recorded this content? You know, uh, just you know, you edit at your own leisure or what, what's the, yeah, there was, there was, there was deadlines and expectations, um, right. especially early on. It was, I'm just basically a cameraman and early on he wanted me to do like a video a day. And it's like, man, I was, I'm lucky to do a video a week. Right. Because let, let's be clear. 
outside of this, everybody has, I say all the time, real life comes first. Gaming is our hobby. It's our fun community. Um, but we have, we have a real life outside of it. So I'm assuming you have a full-time job just like everybody else. Yeah. I've long, you know, I've worked at my job for 18 years. Uh, right. It's a pretty, you know, I'm not going anywhere. It's, it's that and family are my priorities always. Um, so uh, obviously that would be if you're working with someone, whether it's Brandon or anyone, right? just universally, there would be an expectation of um, certain deadlines. But um, basically what I'm getting is you feel a video a day is excessive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, definitely. I mean, it would be for me. For some people, it might not be. Some people, it just comes easy to them, you know? Um. So and it, and he wanted like basically that from, you know, three videos a day almost. So one from each of us. Right. Right. Um. So. I lost my train of thought. I hear my cat banging on the door. She, Let me in. <laughs> She's a lunatic. Um, so uh, ha, I've heard a lot of stories. Like I said, I've interviewed a lot of people already. Um, and some of them are ready to put their name on it and release those videos. Um, but one of the things I heard, and I... I I want to ask you this in a way that doesn't lead you to an answer. So you're creating content for game junction and you're expected to do a certain amount of content in a certain period of time. How does this conflict with creating your own content? And what was the attitude towards creating your own content unconnected to game junction? At the time, I didn't really actually even have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. All my content was really Facebook and, and Instagram. And almost the entire time that I was under Game Junction, I didn't share anything on my own personal stuff. I, I shared it through Game Junction and kind of tagged myself. Uh -huh. Because it was like there was everything had to kind of go through Game Junction, it felt like. Right. So you felt like any content you produced was kind of property of Game Junction. Yeah. Because you weren't really producing content on your own. No. Okay. So to be honest, like I, I understand that mindset. Um, I don't think it's excessively problematic. Um, because if you were a, a, a content creator on your own, making a lot of content and then started working with Game Junction, I've also heard things and I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about because that attitude of creating content for your own content and unconnected to game junction was very different for other creators that had standing content creation that was unconnected. Right. Correct. And it felt like he would almost like treat me worse because of it, you know, cause it's like, where am I going to go type deal? Right. Yeah. I got no place else to go. Yeah. Well, I was fine with, uh, you know, in October I was fine with going nowhere because it wasn't fun and I didn't care to make content and I'm, you know, and, and I do now I'll create content for myself. It's not on a deadline. I don't come out every Friday at a certain time. I, when I want to is when it comes out. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I make content when I feel like it. I actually, this is a little bit embarrassing for me. I said, I, I think I mentioned it in the original video. Um, I actually stopped making content from December, uh, early December up until the last two weeks or so. And it's because I started, uh, might have been even before December, but I had been interviewing people on this subject for a while. And it, I'm not a negative person. So, like, all of this negative stuff left me feeling kind of gross. And it got me to a place where I didn't want to make any content. Oh, I, I totally understand that. And I kind, of, I kind of relate a little bit because I haven't had a video out in probably four months. But I have two that I've kind of worked on and just kind of put away and just stopped working on it because I lost... I just didn't want to do it. And yeah. a lot of that was sour taste in my mouth from that. Yeah, I understand that because uh, I have uh, I have a passion project thing that I do. And it's the stupidest thing in the world. Nobody watches it, you know. And I'm okay with that. I, I talk about 
uh, old science fiction movies, books, and TV shows. I call it forgotten sci-fi. It's pretty lame, right? Yeah. But I love doing it. I I have four of them filmed. Have not released any of them just because I had this ick on me about all of this negativity that I was really trying to get past. And I, I, I've, I've struggled with that because I'm, I'm not here for clicks. I'm not here for views. I, you know, I'm a community member. I spend all my time in the community. And if content's making me feel a certain type of way, I'm going to step away from it. Yeah. And I, I did the same thing. I even stopped watching kind of YouTube for at least a month. Yeah. And that, that was my television. I didn't, you know, I don't have cable. I just have a couple you know, services, but YouTube is pretty much my TV and right content creators or my channels or my, you know, daily content. And I stepped away from it because it upset me so much for a while. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Um, so when you left, when did you say you left game junction? So it, I left and I left her the, technically the same exact time as Brandy when she uh, made her public announcement. I, I don't have a lot of people that follow me or really care. So I, I didn't make any public announcement when I look we all, everywhere. You know what? We all start somewhere. Nobody watches my content on YouTube. I don't care. Um, I've abandoned my Instagram a long time ago. You know, I, I I stick to my Facebook group mostly. And, and so we all start somewhere and create content and hopefully we put out something that somebody likes, you yeah, know, it, it, it's, mo you know, most of my family and my mom. <laughs> yeah. A lot of friends. Yeah. Oh, dude. My mom is in my live streams all the time. Bless her heart. I got to mention she was hospitalized last night. Um, I'm waiting on a little word. I might have to, I'm a, I live in New York now. I might have to hop on a plane and head back to New Orleans. Um, but Mickey Tendo ain't no joke, you know? Well, hopefully. Wonderful lady. But, uh, but you know, you mentioned moms. She's always in my live streams in the chats. Everybody knows my mom. Yeah, that's know? awesome. I, yeah. My mom shares all my stuff. It's I love it. It's my one of my favorite things. Yeah, dude. That kind of support means a lot, you know? Uh, with, um, with Game Junction, it really started souring right before, a little bit before October um, because... I was noticing like the riff that was between Brandon and Brandy mm -hmm. and I really didn't understand it. Um, especially coming from Brandon's point of view, because he was just always so angry and demanding more and more and more and upset a lot. And I kept, I was coming from the, the camp of if she does anything for you, you should be happy. Like right. she doesn't have to do those things for you. She can do a video for her channel instead of your channel. There's no right. reason and, why. And her platform was larger than game junction combined on all platforms and yeah. just her. So yeah, man, look, if somebody like Brandy wanted to join up with me, I'm thankful for the crumbs she wants to give me, you know, I yeah, love any time. Anytime. And, and we went to a convention, we went to Cleveland, the Cleveland gaming classic or whatever. And he avoided her like the plague and was angry the whole time. And it just, and it was, there was this riff that had to be kind of, the beef had to be settled and it never kind of was, it wasn't mm -hmm. until like another month and it, I, I was done. So was there a specific event that like, what was that moment for you? What was the incident for you that happened where you're like, this is it. I'm done. I was already really upset at Cleveland and there was a discussion that needed to happen between all three of us to see where game junction was going to go in the future. It felt like there was kind of different views. Brandon wanted to go one way. Brandon wanted to go another way. We kind of needed to meet in the middle to see what we wanted to do. Uh, we never really got to have that conversation. And that really upset me. And so we had, there was a following convention the next month that Brandon and I were going to. It was in New York. Went mm -hmm. to Retro Game Con. And uh, Brandy was busy. She had something planned, you know, you know, right. months, months and months in advance. Right. Uh, she was never going to be there. And when I got to Retro Game Con and they opened the doors for us, you could see in his face just like, hey, you're not Brandy. And yeah. that happened a couple of times. And it's like, yeah, you're right. I'm not Brandy. And come to find out, they pull you aside, pull me aside and said, you know, you know, no offense to you, but we didn't invite Game Junction really to the event. We invited Brandy. And then we were told that the only way Brandy was going to come is if Game Junction was coming. Right. 
And so they agreed upon that and they're like, okay, Game Junction's coming, which is Brandon and Brandy. And then when I show up, it's like, it was a big shock. And they told me ahead of time, like, we would have never really invited him type deal. Cause I told, I told the promoter, like, she was not going to be here. It wasn't like something happened this weekend. So, moment. so were they led to believe that she was going to be there? Absolutely. Yeah, there and that was that really upset me. And I was I had to say something to Brandy pretty much the next day. I was like, I'm gonna, you know, if, if Brandon's not gonna talk to her, I'm gonna talk to her. Right. And see what's going on. Right. Um, I, I've spoken to her about this issue a little bit. Um uh, apparently that happened a couple times, you know, as far as uh Gamer Aimer appearing for Game Junction and then her not either not knowing about it or knowing for a fact she was not going to be there. Yeah. And it was, you know, at that point in time, it was like known that I was going to be there. So there was no reason why to exclude me from any promotional items or talking. It was just other than he knew the fact that he wouldn't be invited if, if they knew right. Brandy wasn't going to be there. So do you, do you feel that you were intentionally uh, excluded from promotional materials. 100%. 100%. And it, and it gets even crazier to the point where um, for Cleveland, the photo that they used, I took. Uh huh. And then at the end of the show, you know how a lot of times you get to keep the banners and things like that? Right. Um, Brandon wanted me to store the banner at my house because he had nowhere to put it. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, no. No, I'm not taking the banner and I'm not storing it. I might mean, proudly display it in my game room, you know? Right. Uh, a banner that uh, I was not on. <laughs> and it was, and it was at that point, it was obvious. Like mo as soon as I got to the event and everybody goes, Hey, look at your banner. And like pointing out the fact that I wasn't on it. Like multiple people came up to me and goes, Hey, look at the banner. That's got a sting, huh? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Um, no, I, 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 I get it. That that's that can't not sting, you know. Yeah, actively trying to kind of knock you down a peg type deal was that's kind of what I was getting. I was like, okay, now I'm I'm not working for something. I'm just constantly working for free. Um. So, I've also been accused during the rage text of um, making up the gaslighting. And I know from my own personal experiences that that's true. Um, actually, I was accused of making up everything uh, yeah. by a certain individual. Just one individual, obviously. Yeah. Um, did you find gaslighting to be a thing? Big time. And uh, the worst was the manipulation that was being done between former members of game junction or people that were previously associated. We, you know, I was constantly told to stay away from certain people and, and kind of things were made up about certain people to kind of keep me away. Right. And uh, I don't know if there's a single one I don't talk to, to this day. And almost all of them are good people and nice people, right? Things just completely made up about them. I, I, I experienced that myself. Um, I had hard feelings for someone for a while. And then one day when I started seeing what I saw and my eyes opened and that's when I started talking to other people and I started interviewing people. Um, I've reached out to this person. I, I never like had it out with them, but I'm like, Hey man, I had ill feelings towards you and I'm sorry for that. I was led to believe certain things about you that I realized over time definitely weren't true. Yeah. And unfortunately I had like, I send that same exact message maybe to three, four people. Yeah. And, yeah. And, I, I, it, it, it stings a little bit to, to send that message, but at the same time, tell the truth. It feels kind of good to be able to send that message yeah. because you, you've, you've come to a place where you've fixed at least that part mentally. You've woken up to something that allows you to say, Hey, I had this wrong and you know, it, it's a big thing. Like I've been wrong many times in my life. I call myself out all the time. Um, one of my partners, Joel, the retro lizard and I talk all the time 
And one of the reasons we get along is because we constantly tell each other, I screwed up. I'm, you know, and, and just, you, you got to be able to take accountability for your actions. Even if you you were led into a situation where you did something or thought something about someone that was inaccurate, there, there's a certain amount of personal accountability there. Yeah, that was important to me because this is a community and environment I want to stay in for a while. Right. And I had that feeling when I departed that maybe he won't be around for much longer as the band hammer already started immediately coming out. Um, as soon as Brandy posted something, he started getting banned at shows because it was starting to become somewhat public and things like that. Yeah. Um, hold on. Sorry. No, so I just wanted to have like uh, I came out because I knew I was embarrassed. I but I wanted to at least put it out there, going, "Hey, I I screwed up because I had this you know perception of you, or you know I wouldn't approach you because I knew if I went and talked to you, I would get screamed at from somebody for you know." Yeah. Um. I interesting enough, I think the first message between us was you reaching out to me, uh, saying, "Hey, I'm I, you know." this is this happened you know yeah, yeah um, because i i found out that you were basically putting together stuff a few months ago um oh i knew yeah. i knew word would get around but it was like i was trying i was trying to be quiet about it not really sneaky but um believe it or not a lot of people actually were uh intimidated because they feared his reach so that was actually part of it, which I personally don't understand, but I've never had uh, that kind of power dynamic with them. So um, that it's different for me. Right. Yep. So you had a different power dynamic with him than I did. You saw him almost as a boss and employer. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing is, people didn't want to talk. And I'm like, if he finds out I'm talking to people. And he starts talking about it. The interviews dry up because people are not going to want to talk because he's going to try to get out ahead of it. He's going to uh, try to burn people. Um, actually, I think that's the game plan now is from the rage text that uh, dirt on everybody's coming out. And OK, I don't really have any dirt. He kind of that was kind of the same way, too, was uh, I what dirt can he really spew about me i mean i haven't done very much in a long time i have a lot to lose so yeah yeah i was i was more uh i was more concerned about like other people being involved in the future right and um and so like talking with you uh, the only we we've mentioned very few people by name because i want people to be able to tell their own story and some people are more comfortable than other yeah um, and almost all of us talk to one another and yeah. we share the same story. So when we heard that like you and some other things are being kind of put together, it's like we would have reached out if we felt there was something different, but it was like, Oh, he's getting the information because none of us have to lie. It's all, we're all saying well, the same thing. You know, that's kind of, it, it's kind of strange. Um, the, the, when I first started, I was like, okay, this is, this is what, happened to me and one of the believe it or not one of the first people i contacted was uh the game closet mm -hmm. because the first time i went on the game junction podcast uh he was one of the co-hosts so i messaged him and i'm like do you want to talk i knew if he wasn't there anymore there was a reason very nice guy we had a great conversation so then i talked to a couple more people and they told me the exact same story and i'm like this is weird, you know, because realistically, none of you guys know me. We don't, yeah. we don't interact. I mean, um, I, I feel like when it comes to content creation community, um, I, I, I interact with the community of players and collectors, right? Um, but as far as content creation community, I, I don't, I'm not really in there because I just do my own thing. Um, so all you guys know each other, but you know, you might've heard of me, but you, but most people don't know me, you know? 
Yep. And so it was a shock to me that all of these people that really don't know me are all telling me the exact same story. And we're not, you know, not everybody is local like I am, you know, you right. all over the country that have had these interactions with them, sometimes even just brief at shows and things like that. But they're all similar, very similar. Right. It's a uh, well, again, you know. I don't want to burn it down, but people need to know what they're getting involved. In. Yeah. I mean, I haven't came out here. You have anything I've heard hasn't been a truth that I've experienced. So it's one of those things where if he wants to come out and say some things against it, go right ahead. I'm, I haven't blocked on everything, so I won't see it anyways, but. Yeah. I think I'm blocked. I think I'm blocked now. Yeah. I, I don't think I was before, but it, it is what it is, man. Um, if I was in his position, I'd block me too. Yeah. He, he seems to be every year just avoiding more and more people. So, and, um, I got a ominous message from somebody today that I should let this go and lay low. And the truth is like with talking to you, I have, um, two more people that want to talk today. Um, People just want to tell their story at this point. You know, a lot of you guys have had this stuff bottled up for so long yep. and just been dealing with it. Um, you're ready to share it. Yeah, we and, haven't had a convention in a few months, essentially, to get together and talk to one another. So we've had this, you know, build up for, you know, too long not to talk about it with people. Right. And um, it just it just seems like since I put out that video and I'm friendly with everyone I meet, I, I have no problem, you know, uh, asking questions. Yeah. I try and I, I, I try not to be a dick. I try to be a nice person. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to be nice. I mean, I don't want anything right. bad to happen, but yeah, I, I don't, really want people. I, I would love for him to do better. So, okay. So let, let me say this too. And, uh, I might even edit this part out because I'm not trying to make myself look like a dick or anything, or I don't know. I don't know how it would portray me, but to be honest, um, when I was receiving all those rage texts last night, my response was, eh, eh. and I'm like, Hey man, you can be angry. That's fine. But you're missing the pot here. The pot here is you hurt people. You used people. You manipulated people. And the thing that people love more than a good drama is a good redemption arc. What you need to do, the move, is to say, I'm sorry. Tell people you're sorry. Tell people you're going to do better. Exactly. Like, grow. Grow as a part. So that's that was my response. And then it came, oh, I'm going to release dirt on everybody. And I'm like, dude, that's not... That is... That is not the move, you know, like you can release dirt on me. I don't care. There's not really anything out there on me. I'm a, I'm, I'm such a low key stay at home guy, you know, but, um, you know, I, I don't think that's the move. That's not growing as a person. And I think I'm right when I say people love a redemption arc more than they love a good drama, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, you know, that was my response. Like, Hey, say you're sorry apologize, mean it, do better as a person. Yeah. I just get so frustrated because it's just like, I, you know, like you said, I considered him a friend and there's like, so you know, there's a, like a friendly love there for him. And it's just like, I want him to do well and do better. And I, I'm not happy with other people not having a good uh, view of him, but I want him to have a good view of himself and want to do better for himself and right. acknowledge what's happening. He never, he would never wouldn't acknowledge the issues that were happening with game junction, uh, <coughs> the, um, the partnership and just let it blow up and just ignore right. it and just ignores everything. Right. No. Um, I think that's a major theme here that needs to be addressed. Um, it's just acknowledging I, it, like, that's the first step. Acknowledge that there's a situation, acknowledge your part in the situation and then take corrective action to fix that situation. Yeah, acknowledge the screaming at people for no reason at all. Like, you know, have, have you been screamed at? Oh, yeah. And and 
so like a couple of the more recent ones that are top of my head, like the the final straw when I in Syracuse, New York, I drove so far from Ohio to New York and I was on the phone with my girlfriend for like 10 minutes and I got screamed at for um, getting on need to get off the phone because we had to play a video game. And my girlfriend heard it and it was like, I'm getting off the phone because I'm upset. Like, I'm, right. Talk to me later. Yeah. Um, again, that must be that power dynamic because I would, my response would probably be to just laugh, mm -hmm. you know, like, <laughs> That's okay. You know, I we, wouldn't get angry. I'm not that kind of person. If I get angry, somebody's in a lot of trouble, but I'm, it I'm not so anymore to get me angry. Yeah. I'm not anymore because a previous one to that, um, was in Georgia and I, he, he kind of blew up on me in the car. And mm -hmm. I, and I was like, okay, if I was a different person, I would leave him here. Right. Like I, I'd probably be upset, violent, and then also leave him stranded in another state. But I didn't, it, it went through my mind. I was like, it you was considered it. <laughs> yeah, it. It was, it was one of those things where, you know, because Brandon physically, um, if, cause it's, you know, you're seeing things on the internet. He's not, he's like foot, like five, six, five, seven. Right. Um, I'm six foot, 215 pounds, former, right. you know, college athlete. I really, in my mind, I was thinking a forearm, open the door. He's in Georgia. You know what I mean? Like, right. Not very hard. And it's just like, I think no, I'm but that's, that's the weird thing about a power dynamic is it doesn't matter about physical strength or stature, or even uh, if, if you feel like you're smarter than this person, when you have a, offset power dynamic yep. as boss employee whatever it 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 changes you mentally yep yeah absolutely um thomas is there anything else you want to say no it was great to like finally you know to have a platform to kind of talk about it um as it's being talked about because how important it was to stop this kind of from happening to other people in the future uh, because conventions don't know some of the smaller conventions at this point don't know what's kind of going on with them and invite them out. And it, it creates a bad environment for the conventions. It creates anybody that gets involved with them uh, that he may, you know, you know, swindle between, you know, the snake oil between, Hey, join game junction. Cause we have 75,000 viewers or where, whatever a crazy number is. Anybody that gets involved kind of needs to know ahead of time that, Hey, warning you, you may get yelled at. You may not get paid for your work. You may not get credit for your work. You may not get promoted. Right. Right. Okay. I appreciate you, Tom. And thank you very much for uh, telling us your story. It's very much appreciated. Well, thank you so much, Bill.